If you are a woman struggling through menopause right now and you are not feeling good in your body, you feel like the best in life is passing you by, but you want to feel healthy and strong and vibrant and take back control so you can go after what you want, this is the episode for you. I feel really grateful that we are in the era of celebrating older women and really seeing the value of the strength and the wisdom and the life experience that we bring. And so in episode eight, I shared my menopause journey and I shared some of the food and lifestyle strategies that I've used to thrive during menopause and the things that my dietitians and I use in our 60 day reset to help other women over 40 feel incredible. And so I promised that I would invite some of those women to share their stories and how they're using some of these strategies to feel fantastic in their bodies, but also to empower themselves in the rest of their lives. So I asked three spectacular women from our community, Sharon, Stephanie, and Penny to join me so they can share what they're doing. So let's get the skinny from Sharon, Penny, and Steph. Oh, Steph, Sharon, and Penny, thank you so much for joining me. I have to tell you a little secret. I couldn't sleep last night because I was so excited because we were just going to all have lunch (laughs) together and just have this juicy, beautiful conversation about empowering ourselves, right? So listeners, these are three of my favorite women, um, as I said, and um, part of the Skinny 60 community and um, really hanging shiny lanterns for all these other women in our community for how you can really feel really incredible over 40. So Steph, I want to start with you because your it has to be me moment with your health came from somebody else's has to be me moment, right? Yeah, it did. It was, um, look, it was terrible. We, a very dear friend of, of mine got diagnosed with cancer and um it was shocking. We were all devastated by the diagnosis. Um, and they went into their own, um, you know, space to deal with it. And then we saw them a little while later and they just changed their entire food um, regime and their diet was completely different and they looked uh, amazing. And um, he was really healthy for a period of time. It was quite amazing how powerful that the diet change was. And um, I just, it got me thinking, why do we wait for the diagnosis before mm. we look mm. at our food or, um, and start thinking about what are we putting in our bodies and, and how does that contribute or as, how is that um, affecting our health? How does that contribute? And I, it was a, um, the catalyst for making the decision to join Skinny 60 and really evaluate my food habits and um and see how well could I feel at my age I was um 54 would have been about 54 and um I was an early menopause person I'd started menopause at 45 yeah um Mm. and you know started to just put on weight like all of a sudden the food that I used to be able to eat I couldn't eat anymore oh we can Um, all relate to that right yeah (laughs) so sad it's like what what am I doing I'm doing what I've always done (laughs) and just gaining weight steadily and not being able to sleep and feeling bloated all the time and becoming a yeah um gas machine (laughs) you know (laughs) All, all those terrible things that you think isn't going to happen to you. But, um, and so I started like at 45 looking for, oh, well, how am I going to stop this from happening to me? And, you know, I did a, a, the two and five diet for yeah a while. And that's really easy, isn't it? I mean, you starve yourself for two days and then you <laughs> eat whatever you want. That's awful. Right. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. You can get your head around it though really easily, can't wow. you? It's like. That's oh. so easy to do. But actually doing it is really hard. Like mm. I, that feeling of actually being starving, oh, it, no it, it just, yeah, no, it gets really, really difficult. Well, that's the one thing the four of us have in common. We all love to eat, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the amazing thing. You are allowed to. And you're allowed to eat um, oils and fats. <laughs> the no oil thing. I mean, I can't. I, I love oil. Yeah. I love yeah. oil too. I, I mean, love extra virgin oil. olive oil, if I found out I was allergic to that, oh, game over. I would be so sad. <laughs> it's so sad. Well, then that was the next. So I did that for a period of time and then I went um, and then 
stopped and I just couldn't stand the starving anymore. And so slowly the weight came back on because my body had gone, oh, hey, you've been starving. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then I saw my sister and she'd uh, lost a lot of weight and it was like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> and she'd done Weight Watchers. And so yeah. I thought, okay, yeah, I can count calories. This is important. Um, and I did that. No oils though. You're back oh. to no oils. And it's hard. So it's really easy to do the app and and they, you know, it's it's kind of get your head around it. Okay, I'm just not allowed that food. That food I really like, I'm not allowed. And then, um, and and it it works, but it's just so hard to maintain. But it's easy mentally to do. Yeah, or you know, hard to do. It's funny. I, I love how you're bringing up this idea of easy and hard because. Everything is easy and everything is hard, mm, right? So we take which- our, yeah, we take our easy and our hard where we choose to take it, right? So yeah. going to McDonald's is easy, but yeah. it's really hard to digest and it's really oh. hard when you get a disease from it, right? <laughs> Right. Yes, whereas, yeah. whereas cooking your own food is harder, right, yeah. or hard because it takes time, but it's really easy to digest and it's really yeah. easy to live your life when you're healthy, right? Oh yeah. gosh, I, you know, totally. so so Sharon, I want to go over to you. Things were talking about easy and hard. Things were hard, right, in your life. That was your it has to be meme, right? You wanted things to be easier. Definitely. Um, so I think I was always pretty focused on my health because I lost my mother at a fairly young age to cancer and then my father. Mm-hmm. So I was always very focused on my health and eating right. I'd been an ethical vegan since 2008, but I still wasn't feeling great. Mm. And had a lot of stress. My body just did not handle stress very well. And I ended up, um, I was in that menopause period where weight was starting to pile on a little bit. And um, what happened was I I got COVID and a version of long COVID. And everything that was Mm. happening to me just started to pile up. The anxiety that I had was just getting worse and worse all the time. My weight was going up. I had all sorts of issues that I never had. Um, Aside from being unable to sleep well, I was waking up in the middle of the night, just bolting awake, panicking like I couldn't swallow. I had plantar fasciitis. I had sciatica pain. All this stuff was going on. Wow. I'd already been working with a naturopath um, who was wonderful and a nutritionist. And um, I thought I was, you know, in a good place in terms of what I was eating. I'd done elimination diets because I would have a lot of fatigue, a lot of achiness, joint pain, couldn't really get to the root of anything. And I also knew from my holistic practitioner that I had some autoimmune issues that they couldn't quite get to the root of. So all of that was happening. And then the COVID just really um, destroyed me. And my doctor ran some blood work. It showed it had reactivated past infections. Um, At the same time, I saw my primary care physician, and it was the first time ever that she had made a comment about my weight going up. And um, (laughs) Oh, what did that feel like? Yeah. It felt awful. (laughs) Yeah. And and the sad thing is that she was really discouraging because she said, you know, when we're women at this age, we still weight in the middle. And no amount of exercise, no amount of anything. Oh, sort of so like not true. Into the club. So not true. Yeah, not true. <laughs> it was just so discouraging. Oh. And at the same time, the the long COVID, I I got diagnosed with a form of that. It also was really affecting my mood, and that's when yeah. I knew something was really wrong. That that's what led to the blood work being done because, truthfully, I was having suicidal thoughts. And I have never Uh, had that before. And it really rattled me. So all of this was kind of happening at the same time with both uh, of my doctors. And my nutritionist from that um, holistic doctor, she was aware of tests. And I had done other things before, like elimination diets. So I I was at a point where I needed more structure. And I needed, I just needed help. And I was willing to do anything because I was so miserable and I was scared. And I was at this, a certain point where I thought the stress in my life, are these things even this bad or is it that my body is so out of control that I just don't know how to handle anything anymore? So I ended up um, coming into Tess's community and I, I started with the decadent detox and then I went straight into the um, SK60 community and this type of eating with the focus on my digestive health, which was eye-opening for me because I didn't realize the connection between the brain and the gut. And 
I, after the detox, my plantar fasciitis was gone. My sciatica was gone. I was able to sleep better. My mood improved. Wow. Not the same kind of anxiety. And that's what just kind of set me off on, okay, um, I it made you made you a believer. I remember you coming <laughs> on, yeah, and the the the, the, the you're t- Sharon's talking about the fourteen day cleanse, and in two oh, weeks, yes. just in two weeks, you were feeling so much better from the power of food and better digestion. And so then you was that it was that an it has to be me moment for you where you went because. What you were talking about before about having suicidal thoughts, feeling like your life was out of control, feeling so emotional and hopeless, and all, this is so common during perimenopause and menopause, and it's just put down to, oh, well, it's your age. You're just going to have yeah. to ride it out. That a doctor tells you. That, oh, that's that, terrible. You know, yeah, that you, that you have to resign yourself to this is, this is it. <laughs> and it's not true. We it's all know. We were all going, ah, oh, we were all laughing, going, we are on the other side of this. We know this isn't true now, right? But if you're listening and your doctor has said that to you, what's our message to to somebody right now? <laughs> I'm a doctor, first of all. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, you don't know what they're talking about. Right? Yeah. yeah. We have test- the power. Yeah, and, and I had said that to myself as these things hadn't worked and before I did Skinny 60, I had said to myself, oh, this is what it is. I'm resigned right. to buying a bigger wardrobe and this is what it is. I didn't even know the doctor. <laughs> you don't even have to, you know, people are saying this to themselves. They've heard it. It's yeah. a myth. And, and, you know, it's you. It, it's not true. It's so, not true. So, yeah. so. Penny, yes, you were already in the zone, or so you thought, right? Oh, you God, are yes. an amazing triathlete, so fit and healthy. <laughs> Your fitness, I mean, my goodness, I'm embarrassed to post my little workout videos on Instagram because I, I know that I know that you're connected to me on Instagram. I'm like, oh, God, compared to Penny, I'm hopeless. Oh, you want to do the thumbs up? Keep going, Tess. I feel like you're we're a CrossFit together on Instagram. <laughs> we're like, go, no, Tess, you know. <laughs> but I mean, you're like a rock star to me in terms of working uh-huh. out, right? So you came into our community a completely different way again yes. right yours was just yes. through you're such an amazing cook and you came in through wanting to have delicious recipes and stuff yes right? yes and I that's exactly right and I I I was actually just talking to someone about it I I think I found skinny 60 through following you on Instagram and it was early pandemic and I thought you know what taking a cooking class would be amazing because I love all of your recipes and they all taste so good everything I have every page tagged And once I joined the community and then I started to follow the recipes and then, and then listen to all the stories of these, these amazing people across the world. I just love the fact that people are from all over the world. So I guess you meet so many and then the, just the, the, the community aspect around helping each other and listening to each other's stories is, is so powerful that I don't know how many how many sessions I've done tests. I think I've done two, three or four because the framework was so important to me to have the recipes mm. to be able to use the the um, the online portal uh, and and then get the recipes. I felt so good, and I still do. But my story is that that yes, I also went through menopause very early. Um, I started to see a lot of changes in my body. I do a lot of work. And I mean, and you know this from just observing the the work that I've done. I'm an endurance athlete. I run marathons. I do triathlons. I like to do hard things. I just do. And wow. and now, I, you know. I need to make it look easy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, and it's, it's it, like, we need bone strength. I broke my wrist. You remember that during one of the, the yes. SK60 um, sessions, like, so, so things were happening like that. And I thought, what the heck, how is this happening to me? I'm lifting heavy weights. I'm running a lot, but, but what was I really doing and why was I doing it? And I think taking time to really, uh, you know, pause, ask yourself questions, think about why am I feeling a specific way? And, and for me, food is community, but it's also, and you talk about this so much, Tess, about food being community and s- celebrating food and not depriving yourself. So I'm not, de- I, I don't like any deprivation or any thinking. I don't think that way. Me so, neither. Right. So the abundance of what we have at our fingertips, but you as, as a person who knows food and the way that, 
combinations of flavors and, and just the magic of what you put in your cookbooks and in all of your recipes make it even more fun on top of having the community. But then how I felt after even going to bed, just so light and so rested. And I didn't like, I didn't have to get up a million times to go to the bathroom. I was <laughs> my, magnesium, my magnesium, which I still take and my kids take like just there's so much of the way that I've, what I've learned and how to eat that has been uh, now part of just my family's, the way that we eat mm. dinner, lunch, breakfast. I, I, I feel like I've learned so much that it's, it's part of just who, the fabric of who I am. And, and then, and then, and working with, with all of you and your nutritionists and dietitians, uh, mm to try and tweak, you know, if I was doing an event, like what kinds of, what kinds of carbohydrates, what kinds of proteins, how do I fuel myself, um, in order to support my, uh, you know, what task I had at hand was really the area that I just continue to play with and tweak, which I love. It's just, I'm, I, like an ever forever student. Uh, but I mean, it's like the puzzle, right? The puzzle of Penny, the puzzle of Sharon, the puzzle of Stephanie, the puzzle of Tess, right? We get to yes. keep figuring it out every day. It is. And it's a process. And it's not, it's not even, mm. it's, it's not a destination in it's, it's a maintenance, but it's also a maintenance in how you feel and, and constantly assessing that. And it's okay to feel, not feel good every single day, but, but the why, and I know it's because of what we put in our mouths and yeah. how we, how we approach it and our mindset, it's very holistic and, and, the, the community aspect of it and the way that you think about it, Tess, through all of your programming and and now your podcast, It Has to Be Me, is just is remarkable. Oh, look, thank you. I, but you know what's so great is the community, isn't it, right? Isn't that we're it? all supporting each other. We're all learning from each other. We're all in this together. You're not alone in any of the feelings that you've got, right? So, right. Sharon, one of the things that really came up for you a lot wasn't it when you would come to office hours, we'd all talk, you know, about our struggles and what we were, what was going on that week was that you would share. And then all these other people, you know, thinking that you were feeling like this and everybody else was doing great. And then all these other people would put their hands up and go, Oh, I so can relate to you. Just like we're talking right now, all of us going, yep, yep. I felt like that too. Right. So what were some of the things that you learned about how your food choices intersected with your other choices? And as you were feeling better, how that empowered you, you know, to first of all, realize you were not crazy. And despite what your doctor told you, mm. you know, there were some things you could do to lose weight. Yeah. Well, I, I think one of the first things that was very obvious when I first met you Tess, I couldn't even be on camera because I was so emotional and crying and bawling my eyes out. Mm -hmm. I felt so much guilt just at the thought of taking care of myself. And I think it was only up until last week I've cried in probably every session we've ever had because there's just so much gunk I'm getting out or processing. Mm -hmm. And so it is a very holistic approach. There's the food, but it's also about mindset and limit it, these limiting beliefs and getting to the root of issues and why we do these things and why we keep repeating patterns. And so what I love about this community is that it's, it's about making the next best choice or decision. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe today I'm going to do this, but the next thing I do, just make it a better choice. Always coming back to taking care of myself. And why do I have such feelings of guilt about that? I don't know. I'm working through it. Um, yeah, tell me a little bit more about that because I think that as women, that's such a common thing. It comes up all the time, right? Like why does everybody else get the best of me and I get the rest of me, right? I mean that that old cliched saying, but that that feeling that, that we don't deserve to prioritize self-care, that self-care is narcissism or it's indulgent or you should be looking after your kids, you should be working, you should be, you should be, you should be, right? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. tell me how that shifting for you, Sharon, this giving yourself permission to take care of yourself, to, to spend time every day on you. Yeah. I mean, it's a hard thing to do at first and it felt uncomfortable, but as I started to do it, it just made me better in every possible area of my life and started to bring me to a place of joy because 
I mean, what's the point of being here? <laughs> I mean, we're here. It's like what Penny was saying, right? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and enjoy food and all of these things. And so spending some time actually taking care of myself makes me better at my job, makes me better in my life or better able to pursue the things that I'm passionate about or be a better friend or all of those things. It's just, I think it's a hard message to come to terms with in some ways, just because of the things we've learned. We all have different backgrounds and or demands on us. But as I started to practice it, it became easier. And I got in touch with um, this sense of joy that comes with that. And just, mm -hmm. you know, it didn't mean that it was taking a lot of time away from these other areas of my life. It was actually somehow making me just better at those things. And yeah. because my body just reacted so well and some of these other things like anxiety and, and all of that just, it started to fade a bit, which yeah. just made it easier to keep going, I think. Yeah. I mean, we are what we practice, right? So yes. you deciding it has to be me to, and you, and you kept coming to those calls and kept sharing your struggles and kept being vulnerable and you were on camera. Yeah. You, you started off camera and then you you went, it has to be me. I'm showing up. I'm going to speak up. I'm going to share my story. And, uh, you know, it's, again, it's that Marianne Williamson thing of what is your greatest fear? You know, when you allow yourself to be vulnerable, you give others permission to do the same. When you shine your light, you give others permission to do the same. And that's what you were doing, even though you were feeling weak and hopeless to use some of the words that you used about yourself you were empowering yourself and everybody else by sharing your truth and speaking up and, and allowing yourself to not have all the answers. I mean, gosh, we always feel like we always have to have all the answers. A penny, what, what's, yeah. what's your relationship with self-care? Cause you're a mother. Yes. So I, I right now prioritize my self-care first thing in the morning as, 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 as much as I can. So I, I try and take advantage. I used to wait uh, for, you know, a later time in the day, but I really try and take my time and put that invest in myself first thing as much as possible, because I know that other things get in the way. And it is, it is like what Sharon said, it is habit forming. I'm, I'm, I was trying, I'm trying to establish these habits where I'm investing in myself first thing, because if I do that, then I'm a better mom. I'm a better spouse. I'm a better friend, all those things. I won't, I, I don't want to have it's not even a regret, but but I, I want to pay, like, put money in the bank, in my bank first and be able to take care of myself so that I am feeling 100% full and as best yeah. I can when I'm ready to, you know, to see other people and, you know, take on the, the rest of the day. So that's been my approach. It's been more of an approach and a mindset. And what I also do is the night before is I try and, and remove a lot of the, the thinking out of my head. I put create lists and try and use those. <laughs> I'm a list, no, I'm a list build up. Exactly. <laughs> Just try and re, like use the lists. And, and, and so I don't go to bed with those lists in my head. I try and keep, take them out and I create like a personal list. I create a work list and then I create like a, a, a get shit done list. And I try and <laughs> <laughs> think about how to do that. And that's been helping me manage how I go into my next day because I can refer to that list. Um, but the self-care is a big deal with acupuncture, massage, working out, eating well. Um, I do a lot in a day. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Steph, have we got you back? We yeah, lost yeah, you for a minute there. So. Oh, good. So so how do you balance self-care and care for others? Because you you got a lot of care for others in what you do. I, yeah, I do. But actually, I've never felt like I miss out. I think. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I think it was modeled for me. My, I am from a three girl family. I went to an all girls school. I think that self care and looking after myself as a woman has been part of what I've seen. And I was thinking about it, uh, Sharon, when you were talking before, when you said, uh, you know, you found joy and turning up and, and it's part of the community and you're all of a sudden modeling it for everybody that's there. Like I, I, I do, I think it's about, um, you know, not having had it modeled for us. Mm. Um, you know, yeah. in the past women have had to, uh, sacrifice themselves for everybody. 
Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, that's, yeah. So that's been modeled for us that, and we have to break it, that mold. Yeah. And, 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 and re-break it. <laughs> right? mm-hmm. it's, you know, I feel like practicing, practicing is a process of deciding and re-deciding. You yeah. don't, you can't just decide once. You've got to keep re-deciding. Right. You've got to keep, keep recommitting. It's like, I mean, for Penny, you know, you working out, right? You just, yes. you don't just do it once. You've got to keep mm-hmm. doing it. So yes. I want to, I want to ask about this digestive health piece, right? That Sharon, yeah. you talked about a minute ago about, about it being such an eye opener for you that it wasn't about deprivation, starvation, because we know that that causes the down regulation of key hormones. If we're talking about women over 40 and perimenopause and menopause and stuff like that, starving ourselves is actually just a disaster, right? Dieting is actually not going to help us get what we want long term, right? So in terms of this holistic approach that we're taking, where we're really focusing on gut health and digestion and that everything else stems from that, you were talking about it being eye-opening. And I know you've all had these aha moments, um, but Mm -hmm. Sharon, for you specifically, what was the big aha in terms of this digestive health piece, like this gut health piece that you realized, whoa, this this is really something. This isn't just like clickbait on the internet. This is a real thing for me. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Well, it's interesting because my spouse actually does have digestive issues. And so I always thought poor digestion meant, you know, like something like IBS or things like that. And I never had any issues like that. But things like anxiety increasing and building and feeling out of control or my body feeling this constant stress and my heart pounding, um, the eye opener for me was the brain gut connection and just knowing that, you know, so much of these hormones, these good hormones, they do come from the gut and focusing on the digestion. It was very freeing to me. Um, I think, you know, I'm not someone who's had anxiety where I've taken medication necessarily for it, but I've certainly dealt with a lot of anxiety or depression and things like that. And you can start to think it's something you cannot control. It's in your head. And I don't want to suggest, you know, anything for for those people who might be on medication, but for me to focus on my gut health and not think about calories or things like that, it it was just very freeing. And Yeah, we don't use that word in our community, do we? Calories. (laughs) It's like, nope, we're not counting calories. So it was just very freeing to me because I felt like, oh, if I focus on my gut health, I'm mm-hmm. I am seeing and feeling all these improvements. My mood yeah. just it it got better. The the stress I'd been holding on to, all those emotions that you do hold in your gut, you know, they were able to get released. I feel much mm-hmm. calmer in my body yes. when I focus on my gut health. And yeah. I mean it's that is eye opening to me because I just felt like these are things that are out of control. It's my brain. This is just the way I am. There's nothing I can do about it. And so for me, it made me feel empowered. If I focus on that, my digestive health, these other things will come. And it's just such a, you know, I mean, a life changer for me, really. To focus. Yeah, I mean, we, we think about serotonin, right? The little, little feel good hormone. Every, you know, th- there's a misconception that the majority of it is produced in the brain. Over 95% of it is produced in our gut, and then our gut sends it to our brain, right? Mm-hmm. And then if we think about GABA and, um, you know, all these other things, it, you know, it's so controlled by our gut, which we know scientifically, right? But I think there's a, you know, you're all very intelligent, high information gatherers. You know what I mean? You're really interested in figuring things out. But there's in intellectually knowing and reading something and maybe, you know, blind faith or trusting an expert and then feeling it in your body, like Mm -hmm. that knowing, I don't think you can replace that. Like for me, even as someone who's a high information gatherer and really interested in health and nutrition and the science behind it all, you got to feel it in your body before you're a real believer. So Penny, you are already, you thought you had your nutrition dialed in. You, that's what you've said mm-hmm. so many times in our community. And then you realize there was a whole other frontier of having it <laughs> dialed in, right? That's and right. this digestive health piece. So so can you um, tell us a bit more about your journey with that? Because you you were, were already eating well, but you were snacking on potato chips and all kinds of stuff, right? Oh, yes. and, and tell us about your journey with moving into a really nuanced place with your nutrition. Yes. So I I will never forget when... Uh, you started to talk about gut health and and just food combinations, and I never ever thought that there was anything like it. And in fact, I did I did do my work and research, and there's nothing out there 
there's no, there's no one's talking about it. There are no books except for you, Tess. You're the only person who talks <laughs> oh. about food combinations. And, um, and I know you have a chapter in one of your books as well that talks about food combinations and taking specific time. So, uh, you know, between eating one, one specific type of food and then introducing another one because of the way that your body digests. And, and that concept I had never heard about until I had worked with you and the community, the SK60 community. And, uh, you know, starting to eat um, sauerkraut with every meal was a game changer for me. Um, being able to have some of the the uh, types of yogurt that that you talk about, the coconut cult, which I still eat every single day. And, <laughs> I'm and I probably so not too, but I just, yeah. <laughs> it is definite. It is my favorite. Um, so and I've, I've left notes at every, you know, store. I'm like, please get this because you will, and it, it, it is off the shelf, but Basically, the the way that I've changed in my eating because of the gut, you know, my understanding of gut health now has lessened the bloating. It's it's what Sharon talks about going to bed and your body is just so quiet and relaxed, yeah. right? And there's so much empowerment in just that and just the control of that. But I used to come home. I used to go right to the cabinet. I used to eat all the chips you know, as I was making dinner. So I was like, yeah, I, I know how to make dinner. I'm really good at all this and I'm healthy and I ran and all these other things, but I'm still feeling pretty, you know, pretty terrible. And then the sugar too was a big component. So coming off of like sugar in a way where we were focusing more on natural sugars through our fruit, you know, and, and through our vegetables was just a game changer for me. And it just made me feel so good. And, and my body so good and my joints so good because you need to, you know, again, back to like the work that I do, my joints really hurt, but everyone wants to say, well, it's because you work out so much. Well, no, that's not, that's not why it was because my joints were hurting from the foods I was eating. And so I was seeing that difference through, you know, my knowledge now of, of, of gut health and how important the gut is and what I, what I eat. And tell, tell me about how your athletic performance and your recovery improved once yes. you reduced the inflammation and you were eating strategically. Yeah. That was pretty incredible. It was. So, so performance wise, I was starting to use more, um, natural, you know, sugars. So, so like dates and we've talked about this and nuts. So I do a yeah. nice combination of those. Um, and, and that would allow, that allowed me through, you know, especially longer, you know, races to not have, because I have done races on pure sugar, jelly beans, in fact, where I was like, <laughs> oh, wow. I would just get like spurts of energy and then I would crash. Wow. Spurts of energy, crash, spurts. And I would, you know, I'd literally need to have jelly beans every 10 minutes. I was grabbing oh. jelly beans and I thought, well, this doesn't seem right. And I forget. <laughs> Maybe it was you, Tess, who talked about it from the perspective it's like throwing newspaper in a fire. It just like goes poof. You're like, oh, I have a fire. I really yep. have no fire. It goes right out. And it's the same kind of thing. So, and then the recovery was really important because in order to, to work with endurance, you have to do endurance, you have to be ready to go the next day. And so eating cleaner, eating better has allowed me to not have that inflammation and be able to not be sore. Um, and, and also be able to sleep. Sleep is a big component of this. So to go to bed feeling like my body was ready to, to, to rest, not to be up at night going, you know, to the bathroom a million times, you know, or what felt like a million times and be able to get a good night's rest. Like you talked about the resting piece. So the holistic, the, the holistic view of a day and, and how to fuel and to let your body digest, like the digestion was a big component of what you talk about. And that for me was what was missing is like, I was constantly eating, thinking, Hey, I'm running, I'm working out, I'm burning, burning calories. I can therefore eat. That is what, you know, what you see out there. It's like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to have a beer. Uh, no, you, you're not going <laughs> to do this and I'm not going to have a beer. <laughs> There's no like, I don't need to reward myself with the beer. That is not what I would go for. So anyway, there's nothing wrong with beer. Yeah. Oh, but listen, we, we can all have a beer. Why not? Right. I mean, but I think what you're talking about is, is 
having choices. Yes. And and actually making empowered decisions from a yes. place of it has to be me. Yes. Like I want to feel good. I have the power to control how I feel. I want to feel better. Yes. And the sleep piece, I mean, when you sleep well, and this idea that you can't sleep through menopause, you can't sleep through the night or you can't sleep through the night when you're 65. You know, I mean, it's just not true true. and you absolutely can. And this idea of getting up multiple times throughout the night, that's to do with hydration and absorption Mm -hmm. and all the things we talk about a lot, right? And that's inextricably connected to strategic eating and gut health. And it's pretty incredible. Steph, what was your experience with the gut health piece and, and, and the journey that you went on with that? I think what the biggest surprise for me was after detoxing, how loud your body got at saying, don't eat that. <laughs> it was extraordinary. And I feel like it was, it's an education for your insides. Yes. It's just all of a sudden, your body's telling you, no, don't eat that. That's no good. I haven't had dairy since doing Skinny 60. Yeah. I haven't had, I really don't eat, um, uh, pasta or rice. Not because I'm not allowed. I am. I just choose not to eat it. Um, because of how it makes me feel. So it's, um, that's, that's what I experienced. It was just incredible how in tune you became. With yeah. It's such, such a great point, right? Because you, I think it's your body got louder. Mm. Did it get louder or you, your listening got better? Because you get the the intuition, right? Because yeah. when we have clean pathways and we're clear and we remove the veils of the white flour, the refined carbohydrates, the sugar, the dairy, the gluten, whatever it is, right, or the alcohol, all the alcohol, we, we can eat. It's the skinny 60, not the drive 60, the miserable 60, right? <laughs> but we do it when we choose to do it in celebration with joy for an, to make an amazing life experience with our family and friends, not because we're comforting, placating, and hiding with it, right? But the downloads come so quickly and clearly when you are strong and healthy and you are nourishing your body effectively, right? You start to listen Yes. And you can't ignore it anymore. And you don't want to ignore it because you're not hiding anymore. You don't want to feel like you felt before. No way. Right. I traveled around um, Italy last year and, I, and everyone's just like, oh, pasta, pizza. I had pasta once and I had pizza once in two weeks, not because I deprived myself, but because that's, I, that's what I, I didn't want it. Right. That's extraordinary. Mm-hmm. It is extraordinary. But, I mean, it is the choices, right? Like we get to choose. How you want to feel. So tell me more about that, um, Sharon. Like you, Steph was just talking about the downloads, right? And you, because here's the thing, we are getting downloads, whether you're on Skinny 60 or not, whether you're eating healthy or not, Mm. the inflammation, the not sleeping, the not being constipated, the Mm. having anxiety and depression, the getting up multiple Mm. times throughout the night, the gas, the bloating, the weight gain, all the things we've been talking about. If that's not your body screaming out to you so loudly, please don't eat that. <laughs> like, I don't know what is, right? But we we just accept it as part of normal life. Everybody farts. Well, every woman over 40 doesn't sleep through the night and gets up multiple times. Every 75-year-old's got to pee in the middle of the night. I mean, we just accept that as part of life, right? Mm-hmm. So so what what was the shift in you, Sharon, where you stopped listening to the doctor going, no, 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 you're not going to be able to do that at your age, no matter what you do? What When was the moment where you went, um, actually, I'm turning this around and pretty quickly? Yeah, I think, well, I think I already knew, like, I'm not going to accept that. I want something better for myself, but... I could only get there with this community, to be honest, and Mm -hmm. that kind of support and encouragement. And then um, focusing on my digestive health and all these other things just came with it. But for me, I'm someone who has perfectionist tendencies. And so me too. A lot of what we do is we just focus on the next better choice and never, it's never about perfection. It's never about deprivation. It's never about, you know, these limiting things. Like you'll never have cake or a glass of wine. It's not that it is very much about just making these better choices to take care of yourself. And, um, so I think I already had it somewhere inside of me that oh, I'm not going to listen to you. <laughs> you, you I love that. People. 
but I needed the help to get there. And yeah. truthfully, um, I listened to a lot of other testimonials of, of people who had gone through the SK60 program, and that gave me a lot of encouragement. And then just being in the community really supported me. And it's not like you figure I mean, we're here for the long haul. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, every day is a, a new choice and, you know, we're every meal and um, it, it's cumulative. It adds up. And yeah, I, I want to have a piece of cake every now and then, but my body will tell me right away how that works for my digestion. And you do start to make those, those choices. It, it becomes easier to say, you know, eh, I like a glass of wine with my friends, but I can still enjoy their presence and not have to have the glass of wine because I know it's going to make me feel like crap tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah. Or, or you choose to have it knowing yeah. that you're not going to feel so great, but you have an extra glass of water, you have your sauerkraut, you have a salad, you just right. find that balance. Right. And so what Steph was talking about when you went to Italy, right? I mean, you're not going to not have pizza or not have pasta. It's delicious. You're in Italy, right? You, <laughs> but you pick and choose your moments and you find that balance. So Steph, now that you've done Skinny 60 multiple times and you, 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 we're not talking about a strict diet, being on a diet, it's not a diet. We're not talking about depriving ourselves. So talk to me about how you found that balance of self-care and fun, right? Like you really, you've really found this lovely, okay. well, you all have, but I'll ask you individually, you know, yeah. of, of not feeling like you're depriving yourself, feeling like you can have that when you want it and then you're going to pick and choose your moments. That was a bit of a revelation, actually. You know, every session, every um, round that you do, you kind of are there to investigate something else, put another yeah. jigsaw, you know, piece of the puzzle in, the jigsaw. Um, I um, have discovered now that I can, you know, you can partake in anything and it is good, better, best. I love that saying, Tess. It's really yes. handy. <laughs> Oh, so listen, <laughs> listen uh, okay, it, today. yeah, just so everyone, so you, you don't feel left out of our little lunch together, the yeah. four of us, um, um, in, oh. in the Skinny 60 community, we've got a, we've got a mantra in the community, which is good, better or best, not perfect. And so we all ab abbreviate it to good, better, best. And so you just, as Sharon, as Penny, as Steph's been saying, um, during this conversation, we just aim to make the next better choice because mm -hmm. perfection does not exist, right? Even though we want to believe that it does, right? And maybe push ourselves there. That's my natural inclination is to think that I can get there, but we're just aiming to make the next better choice and we're learning and growing from it. So sorry, keep going, Steph. I just wanted to make sure we no, weren't leaving, yeah. leaving our listener out of, out of the convo. Um, and so my last uh, piece, so I, I will eat what I want when I'm out, but then I'll just make better choices later. I don't... Um, and that was a bit of a revelation that I can eat the foods and it's not all going to come crashing down. Yeah. Um, that actually was a big piece. But I just have to be prepared. Um, I'm a recipe person too, Penny. I love yes. Tessa's recipes. I um, am always uh, making one of the special meals or, or, you know, recipes for the family. But I now make a massive tub of coleslaw and had that in the fridge so that um, I've got great lunches, but I've always got something in there that when I get home I can nibble on or have a bowl of because if I'm hungry, I'll make bad choices. I've learned that about me. Mm -hmm. um, and so if I have good choices in the cupboard or in the fridge, then um, then it's really easy because once you're full, you don't want any of that other food. I'm a potato chip person too. <laughs> oh, same. Aren't we all? I love potato <laughs> chips. You know, I'm just sitting here thinking I have actually made potato chips uh, skinny 60 um, okay because they're just potato. <laughs> Unless we can do anything, I'm going, oh, actually maybe. Well, maybe Tess has a great know. recipe in one of the nachos. It's like the second or third page in one of, in the, one of the Blender Girls cookbooks. <laughs> just talking about it today. So good. Oh, those nachos are so good. So in the good. perfect blend. Yes. Yeah, the nachos in the perfect blend. That is the oh, one. To die for. They're so good. So good. Yeah. Oh, they're so good. Yeah, listen. I know. An hour left on earth. So good. And let's eat potato chips, right? Okay. But yeah. Um, Tess, I actually do have to say this. Um, the food, the recipe, your recipes are so good that you do find yourself licking the spatula. 
Oh, <laughs> yes. And and you're actually, um, it, it, you just think, well, of course I can do this. If the food tastes this good, I can do this. This is this is not hard. It is not hard. Well, you know, I remember one of the articles, Tess, that you talked about um, where, that, that you had done with the New York Times. And this is where I am, again, like a recipe person and yours are so good because there's so many cookbooks out there that I have followed to the T and and they don't taste good. But I remember you saying like, there's some bloggers and some folks that, you know, create recipes, but they're, they're, they don't taste good. The recipes are not good. <laughs> I, I, I've thought about, wow, you know, if people don't know or really respect the opportunity that they have to be able to create good recipes, that there are people like you who create recipes for, you know, to celebrate every single ingredient and mm. make it up nutritious, you know, down to the macro level and in your books, you break it down. Um, and then to understand what those macros mean, that for me is like the level I'm at right now is, is, is to understand those macros. How are they serving me? And then how are they serving what I want to, you know, be how to perform with those macros? Um, not about calories, not even about burning calories or any of those things, but I know I'm going off on a little tangent, but I think it's that what's so important is is the knowledge base and being empowered with knowledge and giving yourself that freedom to keep growing in this space, all of us as individuals, but then as a community to talk about how they how how it influences how we feel and and how we keep growing. Um, because we obviously, you know, we eat, we love to eat and we need to eat, but we should be empowered with what we're eating. Mm. Well, also, and it needs to just be so fun. Right. Like food is one of the great pleasures of life. Really it is. has to be fun. We yes. have, we're doing it like at least three times a day, yes. right? Sometimes five times a day, right? Munching throughout the day. Like snacking's not a bad thing when you're snacking on delicious, amazing stuff, right? right. And I mean, I love food more than oxygen. I love food more than anything <laughs> on earth, right? Like I just love to eat so much and I don't want to tell myself I can't have that food. Right. Like I just want to keep eating. I just love eating. Right. I know you guys do too, right? So healthy food has to be even more delicious than unhealthy food because otherwise it's not going to stick. We're going to be wanting the potato chips all the time. And hey, listen, we're all eating potato chips sometimes, just yeah. not every day, right? Right. So it's like, yeah, I mean, it. it and also that – um that thing about, I mean, the, the four of us, we love to cook, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But, the, the, you know, you may be listening going, I'm sorry, I'm not joining you guys for lunch because I don't want to cook like that, right? But there's there's something about empowering yourself with nourishing yourself and creating something delicious. It can just be a five or 10 minute recipe. It yeah. doesn't have to be some involved three hour That's lasagna right. or something, right? It can just be something really fresh and beautiful. Um Sharon, how I know you like to cook too and love beautiful flavors. How has regularly getting into the practice of making super ridiculous, flavorful, dimensional recipes changed your relationship with food? Mm. Oh, um, if anything, I like I said before, I have more joy. I think these recipes opened me up to many new types of vegetables, herbs, things that I never even considered before, seasonal produce, um, just using herbs, fresh herbs. It's There's something that just makes me yes. happy when I cook with those. Oh, me too. Uh, but you know me and I love all your recipes, but I also don't like to be tied down to a recipe. I like yeah. to be able to throw things together. And I feel like I've learned so many tools or things about combining flavors just from practicing your recipes. Oh, I love that. So it's given yes. us a lot of freedom. Um, yeah. Recently, like where I, I can throw this. Look at me. I'm like just throwing this together. Oh, <laughs> I love that. I loved that on Office Hours last week. You shared that with everybody about how I'm not even using recipes anymore. I've just learned all these tips and tricks from following the recipes that I'm throwing things together. And my husband said it was delicious. And everybody was like, yeah. Like it was so great. I mean, right? Because yes. again, you are what you practice, right? Yes. So it's like I'm using the same tips and tricks over and over and over, right? Like mm -hmm. it's it's this is I mean, I just love this so much. So Penny, you yes. you love to cook as I well. Do. So I did you have a similar experience as Sharon where you just learned some tips and tricks and now you're you know, you're just 
integrating that into other things that you're cooking? Absolutely. I, I, and and honestly, one of the things that I did appreciate from all of the cooking that we did, not only in the cooking club, but then within the the program was just the the meditation around cutting and and, and taking time. Like that for me was an eye opener. It was very, um, uh, it just, it just helped me be in the moment. So rather than rushing, 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 oh, the help, yeah. like you breaking it down, but being able to stop and just, and, and chop some things or wait for something to finish, you know, the, like the roasted tomato, um, uh, basil soup that you have. Oh, it's so my good. Absolute yeah. favorites. But that's one that I modify, you know, I'll like pull a couple of things, you know, a little, a little bit of a different flavor, um, yeah. or addition. And, and for me, that's what helps me feel very empowered in, in taking your recipe and then being able to, to do the recipe with you and, and the class. So I just really enjoy, you know, um, having that, uh, flexibility and in, in what you've taught us. Yeah. Steph, what, what's it been like for you? Cause you, you, you follow recipes, but you're a lovely cook as well. How is, how have those flavors and, and making things differently affected how you eat at home with your family? Um, I definitely change it up a bit too, depending on um, what I have in the fridge um, but I'm, I'm a, one of the reasons I'm a recipe person is because recipes can introduce you to all sorts of different flavors that you've, you, you never knew. And so, um, I love reading a recipe and going, Oh, yeah, that'll, that'd be good. So, uh, so re- I have an interesting relationship with recipes. Um, but, uh, what I found after eating the food for a while and cooking all the recipes was all of a sudden a simple carrot. Just was like, yes. wow, <laughs> they're so sweet, they're so, so delicious, delicious. So sweet, yeah. and a roasted carrot. Yeah, let me tell you, yes, who needs roasted a jelly bean carrot. when you got a roasted carrot? Better yeah. than chips, you know. Yes. So, so all of a sudden, just you're just fine tuned into a, the flavor of a vegetable. Is yes. just yeah. So so that kind of was the revolution for me was that you didn't have to do so much work with the recipes because you were just enjoying the the simplicity of yeah. flavor, the individual vegetable um, flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh God, the flavor. Yeah. I mean, flavor is love. Flavor is. is light. Flavor is joy. I, I want to go back to something that Steph was talking about because we think going back to the very beginning of the conversation, talking about the weight piece and how it was easy mm-hmm. and hard and, you know, I can't lose weight over 40 and through menopause and all the rest of it. I want to, I want to come back to this idea because you can eat a lot of delicious food yes. and not starve yourself and still lose weight. You yeah. do not need to diet and starve yourself to lose weight. So what was your weight loss journey like on Skinny 60, Steph? Oh, so I had just started to accumulate weight and resigned myself to it. Um, you know, I was, yep, starting to purchase that fat wardrobe. Um, <laughs> and that was so sad. And, and, you know, and nearly, nearly being resigned to that I had to take my slimmer clothes. Yes, let go of those jeans and take them to the secondhand shop. But I did. Yeah, no, I, we loved those jeans. I love those jeans. And I yeah. Quite, which was good because I could fit them afterwards. But I went from, it would have, I would have been, I lost seven kilos in the time. And I had always been 65. So I went from 73, or, I think down or around there, you know, to um, 62, which sounds like 10 actually, doesn't it? Nine. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that you're not counting anymore and you don't care. <laughs> That's what I love about this. <laughs> well, it gets Seriously. more each year. I lose another count. No, it's yeah. not true. Uh, but se- I used to always be 75. I thought that that was my... Um, pre-menopause, that was my actual weight, my comfortable weight. And after Skinny 60, I actually discovered that it was 62 and maybe even potentially it could have even, I could even be 60. Um, just with where you lose weight, like I lost weight. Um, you don't just lose it in the area you want to lose it in. You, you kind of lose it from everywhere and right. you just become a, a kind of like a smaller frame. And it's better for your back. So depending on your body type, 
but yeah, so now I'm my my weight is um sixty two and and that that was my weight journey and and it's easy it's easy getting around in the world um I, and you've I, maintained it that's the other oh, thing yeah. because you just have these skills now and you know what to do right yeah, totally. yes. and, and and it and it feels good and it's not a chore and I don't deprive myself it's a choice I choose not to eat that food because yeah, yeah. what good. about you Sharon yeah um, yeah, I've lost about 15 pounds and kept it off in the last year. I'm, um, I'm five feet. So for me, 15 pounds is. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, uh, I haven't wow. lost weight since I think my 20s. Wow. Um, and again. Did you call your doctor? That <laughs> I, I mean, it, I mean, I will say it, it was easy in that I didn't think once about how much I'm eating or a calorie. And so I'm still figuring out my exercise piece, my wellness. So I'm not doing, uh, you know, like crazy exercise either. And it came off and I've kept it off. So uh, that's just from my body, knowing what to do with the food that I'm eating and that yeah. giving me energy and helping me feel well. I'm so incredible. And a fun way to do it. So fun. Um, Penny, what was yours like? Because mm-hmm. you didn't come into the program wanting to lose weight. Mm-hmm. You wanted to feel lighter and stuff, but you still did, right? I did. I did. I lost about, I was between 10 and 15 pounds I lost. And that that for me, just from the perspective of still maintaining muscle mass and wow. and, and staying strong and all yeah. those things. Um, and it, it was kind of the same thing that, that you're both talking about, Sharon and Stephanie, like feeling a little bit lighter and just like my whole body just shrinking, but noticing it around my, my gut specifically was, was where I carried, I had carried a lot more of my weight as, as I was going through, you know, menopause and just feeling like I was retaining water and all of those things. So, so the water I think was a big component, especially as I was taking more of the magnesium and feeling a lot more balanced in that way. Um, and you were reaching true cellular hydration, exactly. right? Like that's why you weren't, that's why you weren't getting up to pee all, multiple times throughout the night because you were actually, you were actually truly hydrated exactly. and you were absorbing the water finally because you had better gut health. Exactly. And so and yeah. because of my sweat rate, you know, I was sweating so much. I was only yes. drinking a lot of water. So I was getting so much yeah. nutrition from our food, the food that we were, that we're eating. And, uh, and then also with the, the magnesium and the, the resting, I just, I just felt from a, you know, a body composition perspective and the ability to just drop that additional weight that I was carrying, obviously better for my joints and better for just for anti-inflammation. I wasn't feeling it in, in, you know, all of the areas where I'm like, oh, this has got to be because of my, am I feeling sore because I'm working out or is it because of menopause? Like, what is it? And I felt like this was the way that I was just feeling so much better in my body. Yeah. Did you get, Penny, did you get better results in races and things? Did you do you race I, or do you just? I with- did, I did. I I got faster because I could. Oh. I was quicker. You know, I just felt yeah. like I could move a little. Right. I was lighter. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Hey, one thing also we didn't talk about is the data are changing from going to the doctor. When you mentioned to Sharon about going to the doctor. It's just so incredible when you go back and have your your checkup. You know? Oh, tell me about that. Oh well, you know, I didn't. It wasn't. Um, I I really wish that I had gone to the doctor before I did Skinny Sixty and get all of my data. You recommend to do that, and I didn't do it. But I had been to the doctor, so he had yeah. old data. But when I went back after having um done uh the deep, you know, done the sixty day reset. I was, he said that I had lost about five years, five years on my, from my age because of all of the results that were coming in. And that is just like the most incredible news, like better than the weight, really. When you hear that, you, it kind of really reinforces, oh my God, food is and my medicine. Medicine. Yes. And, And if I, and if I spend the money on the food and I spend the time, um, I won't be spending it on appointments, going to see uh, medical practitioners or, you know, it's 
it, it's it's the yeah you, you pick your easy and your hard right <laughs> like yeah. it's easier to just eat all those foods that everyone else is eating but it's hard when you get the diagnosis right yeah. I mean yeah. so we take our easy and our hard where we choose to take it right um what was what were the changes in your blood work Sharon um well my blood work was pretty good to begin with in terms of cholesterol but um, yeah the inflammation went mm-hmm. down yeah. significantly so that yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, gosh. I mean, it, it is exciting, isn't it, when we're on office hours and we hear people talking about the changes in their blood work with their A1C going back to normal and their cholesterol and all the things, right? I mean, it's thrilling and how quickly it can change is is always, it's just astonishing to me. It's, it's really amazing. So thank you, Steph, for bringing that up because, um, you know, I knew that the three of you were in pretty good health. You know what I mean? It was it was all those niggly things like sleep and low energy and, yep. you know, belly fat and, you know, some of these things that we, we, we can live with. Mm-hmm. We're just not going to have the quality of life that we want, right? Right. So thank you for, for reminding me about that because, yeah, people do get extraordinary um, results, you know, in terms of those other markers of better health. Um, Penny, did you um, have blood work and notice your inflammatory markers changing at all or anything else? So I I did not have the blood work done, but I do know that the inflammation, just by the way that I was feeling, was yeah. was was take it, it it had gone down just because I could I could tell from my joints. It's it's the joints that I was feeling terrible about yeah. before I started, and then and then I felt just a hundred percent better. And I know it's because you know I didn't have gluten, I wasn't having dairy. Uh, you know, and just eating a lot of fresh, fresh food. Um, and the sugar, and yeah. Sugar. And I love, you know, like the yeah. chocolate, the little chocolates. I just, there's so many. Just- <laughs> <laughs> I know everybody loves the, cho- the skinny 60 chocolate. I think it's like every second testimonial is talking about the chocolate. Oh my gosh. You're like, just don't eat more than one. But I'm like, how is that possible? <laughs> They're so good. I know. So good. Oh my goodness. I mean, look. I just got to celebrate all of you. I just have to celebrate you. Thank you. Thank you for the way that you show up, the way that you show up for yourself and the way that you you show up for the other people in our community. It, it's just so inspiring to me and I'm just so grateful to, to all of you. Um, it, they're all, all three of you. It, it's such great. It has to be me stories. It has to be me to take care of myself, right? It has yes. to be me to show up. It has to be me to make better choices. You know, for somebody listening out there right now, you know, looking at us at our lunch, the the four of us, like licking ourselves like cats about how great we feel <laughs> over 40 and somebody <laughs> listening going, I can't do that. Yeah. Steph, what would you say to somebody out there listening right now going, I don't feel good and I just don't know where to start. Um, I would say you don't have to feel bad. You don't have to be resigned to putting on weight and feeling um, not feeling uh, sick in yourself or tired or low energy that there is something you can do that will change all of that. And I'm reminded of a quote that came from another podcast uh, that you've done, Tess, I think it was Amber, (laughs) Food Literacy. And she said, take the leap and build your wings on the way. Oh, that was a beautiful way. That was episode one, yeah. if you haven't listened to episode one. Oh, but I would say gosh, that to magical. people, just yeah. take the leap and yeah. build your wings on the way down. You, It'll be a soft landing. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Sharon, what would you say? Because you were feeling hopeless and now you are not. And so, my goodness, hang your shiny lantern, my friend. I would say you deserve to feel well. Please don't accept anything less than that. And if it's hard for you to say that to yourself and believe it, there is this beautiful community here that's going to support you and hold you up and just keep going. You know, small changes, they do add up. And it is amazing what eating well, nourishing your body can do. It does have the power to offer a lot of healing. So... Um, don't be afraid by any of this. Take the leap, like Stephanie said, and small changes add up. You don't have to cook. 
you know, there, there's a lot of flexibility in this community and it's just so supportive and you can show up however you show up. If you need more support, if you're comfortable being vulnerable, that's great. You can be listening. You can be off camera. You don't have to cook every single recipe, but there's nothing more important than doing this and taking care of yourself. So if you can't quite believe it, there's a group out here waiting for you to help support you and, and hold you. Mm. Oh. Um, <sighs> Amber is actually episode five, by the way. Sorry, I had that in my head. I just have to say that. It was not episode one. It's episode five. Um, Penny, what would you say? I would, I would, I mean, I want to echo both what Stephanie and Sharon said. And I would say too, that, that in addition to that, I would say just invest in yourself, really take, Oh, I love really, that. really invest in yourself and think about what we're only moving forward, constantly moving forward, not looking back. And every small step, like Sharon said, it is one small step. Don't think of it. And I, and Tess, I think about how you talk about it, that, that it might seem in the beginning overwhelming because you're giving so much information, you're getting everyone prepared, you know, you have, you have, you're a master in, uh, you know, the framework and, and, and all of the, the, the preparation that you put into the program. So there's so much done, but take, take it and, and invest in yourself. And if there's, there's any question, we're all here to answer a question or to be a, a, a true testimonial of how important this this step is to take because you're only giving it to yourself. It's a, it's an it's an investment in yourself. So I would be, you know, uh, if if anyone has any questions or wants to talk to you know me individually about the program, I would hands down be able to do that uh, because it's been uh, remarkable for just how I feel and investing in my body and in my health and, and to be a better person for my family. And, and I want to live a long and healthy life. Oh, I love that. You know, I'm actually going to close this differently than I normally do now that we've shared that. I want to um, talk about what we talk about in the community all the time about owning what your superpower is. Yeah. So when everybody comes into the community, we celebrate what our superpowers are, the special gift that you have that you can share with the world. And I think when you're going to embark on something new or going to tr apply for that new job or go into that new relationship or whatever it is, we start to get really afraid that we don't have what it takes. And anchoring yourself to the things that you do do really well and you have got figured out really help you to hold new things in balance and help you embrace change and feel like you really do have what it takes to make it happen. So I'm going to close with that today on our lunch. Um, Steph, what's your superpower? Oh, I'm, I think – Empathy and kindness. Oh, yeah. 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 I love it. Sharon, what's your superpower? I think I'm still figuring out some of my superpowers, but I know one of them is taking in a lot of information and detail and then keeping it all together. And the things I've learned in this community, it's like having a pot of gold and I go back to it and I take the things and the tools and put it together and make it work for me so that I have some flexibility and freedom. Yeah, I love that. Uh, what's yours, Penny? I would say my superpower is is being a good friend and and sharing knowledge and trying to empower people with information uh, and just being able to to uh, be open for you know a mutual giving and taking. I think that that is my superpower. I would I would say that you guys are bang on with your superpowers in terms of my experience of you for sure. I mean, oh gosh, how glorious. And isn't life wonderful when we throw our superpower into the ring and we play with others, yes. right? And it's thanks kind for of asking really magical things happen. about what the superpowers are because we do all have one and sometimes we just don't acknowledge it. So thanks for asking. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, we've all... <laughs> You What's have, that? You have so many superpowers, but I don't know anyone who's a better listener than you. And the way you're able to just receive what yes. others are expressing and zone in and get to the core of mm. mindset and feeling. I mean, it's sometimes it's a little freakish, honestly. How you <laughs> know what I'm feeling, but it's amazing. And I think that's why I know I felt so supported. Yes. Really, 
really nice to be part of this. Oh, yeah. thank you. I take that into my heart. Thank you so much. I mean, it's, I just, I feel like, you know, during our office hours, you know, yeah, I'll get that email a lot. It's kind of weird. Maybe I kind of feel like you're a white witch. That's what I was saying to like my friend the other day. Or how do you know what to say to each person? You know, I do really love helping people figure that out. But I think that at the end of the day, the core need is the same to be known and loved Mm -hmm. and to want to be better, to be the best version of ourselves, right? And so to me, that story is always there in what everybody shares. I'm always listening for that. Mm -hmm. What's the, where, where do they need to find the light to know that they're seen and heard and loved and that they're wonderful Mm -hmm. the way that they are today? right? Yes. And so when I'm listening to people in the program, that I'm always listening for that. Like it's that heartbeat that if I'm thinking about it and that's really what I zone in on is the, that need, you know, just to go, yeah, I matter. Like what, what do I, what can I do today to actually feel that way and, and keep showing up, you know, but thank you. It's, you know, the other thing too, is that we're all holding space for each other, you know, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm really just, providing the container and we're all learning and growing together, right? I mean, I just learn today. I've learned so much just from, from talking to the three of you Uh, and every, every office hours and every video call that we have, I learn from every single person that shares, you know, and it helps, helps to put mirrors up and go, whoa, thank you. I understand myself a little bit better today because of each and every one of you, you know? So I hope, dear listener, that you felt a little bit of that magic um, listening to us um, have our little lunch today (laughs) and talk about this. Um, And that, you know, if Penny and Sharon and Steph and I can do it, you can too. Yes. Show up for yourself and and be a better version and feel strong and healthy and suck the marrow out of this life, right? Um, and community is really powerful. So um, we can't, we're not supposed to do this thing called life on our own, right? That's right. Um, so thank you so much for spending this time with thank me you. today. I love I love all of you so thank much. Thank you. Thanks, Tess. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Oh, I feel so topped up by that conversation. I hope you felt like you were sitting there with us having lunch because there's just something magical that happens when women get together and decide it has to be me. You know, Penny, Sharon and Steph, their journeys all started with it has to be me. I want to feel better. It has to be me to figure it out and I'm going to find a community and I'm going to find the information that's going to help me do it. And then incredible things happen. And, you know, a big key takeaway is giving yourself permission to do it your way to figure out what's going to work for you and your lifestyle and personality. And that's what's so exciting for me as a health coach is helping each and every woman in our program figure it out. How do you make things work for you so that you can become the best version of yourself? I also found it so interesting talking about the flow on effect of of what food and nutrition does and, and how it empowers you in every other part of your life. So please know that you have the power to feel better, just like Sharon and Stephanie and Penny and me. I shared my menopause journey in episode eight, that if we can do it, you can do it. And if you want to join us in this beautiful community of women lifting up other women, you can learn more at ithastobeme.com forward slash menopause. I want to hear about your It Has To Be Me story. So head on over to ithastobeme.com forward slash stories to share it in our free community. You can also join the conversations we're having about this episode and others. I'm Tess Masters. Join me next week and we'll dive inside another great story to help us go from dreaming to doing.